you know, let's get right into it. And uh, I hope to share some gems. Like go with. I already know. So here we are at FL Studio. I got a beat pulled up over here that I was working on not too long ago. Uh, I just want to show you guys how to take these sounds and kind of get them sound a little bit more like, you know what I'm saying, clear and basically just sounding better and, you know, well mixed. Nice and uh, balanced out. And uh, we're going to find the right tone as well to... Uh, to fit everything in. So, first thing we're gonna do is open up the mixer window. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that without any shortcuts. Then I'll show you the shortcut as well. You go over here to the, to the view tab in the little uh, menu up above. And you click on mixer right there, or F9 on your keyboard. So here's the mixer. As you can see, every instrument in the session is already tracked out, including my vocals right here, because this is where this is where my microphone is hooked up. That's why you guys are listening to me. And um, I routed it to this track right here. So um, and then I docked it to the right. I'll show you guys how to do that in a second as well. Um, so we go here into all of these. I'm going to go ahead and do it from scratch so that you guys can know exactly how I did it. Hold the command key and drag the mouse pointer over all of the ones you want to include and then stop at the last one that you want to include. So now that they're all selected like this, I'm going to go ahead and click, right click on it and say reset selected track. So once we've hit reset selected tracks to default, everything is going to go back to normal. We're going to say OK. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll click on this little arrow over here in FL Studio. And we'll go into the channel rack. Go into view. We'll go into channel rack. We want to see the channel rack or F6. Once the channel rack is visible, you go over here to this little tab that says audio and you go to all. So you can see all of the instruments that you got involved in the mix. I'm going to go ahead and drag my pointer tool over all of the instruments that I want to include in the mix, which is basically from this one to this one over here. Hit Command L. And now, as you can see, everything on the mixer track on the mixer window here is already routed to its uh, its respective track. So let's go ahead and hear this beat real quick and just kind of look at the playlist editor window to see where the intro is going to end, how it ends. Listen to how the hook is going to come in and listen to what the verse sounds like in contrast with the hook and just make sure that every part of the beat sounds good one after the other you know because these instruments in the intro tend to be isolated so we have to make sure that they sound good when they're isolated but then when the other instruments come in as well those isolated instruments have to sound good all, all in the same context so we just want to make sure that everything is in its space and everything sounds good so Let's just go ahead and let's take a listen real quick and uh, we'll get to it. did notice real quick that there's something that I can do for uh, for the synth, which is in this case the Prophet V3 from Arturia. Um, so I'm gonna click on that real quick 
and go ahead and click on one of the slots. And I'm gonna throw an EQ on it just so I can kind of scope where in the spectrum I want it to uh, to sound more. I'm gonna go ahead and slap a Fab Filter Q3. Where is it? Okay, Pro Q3. All right, I love this EQ because you can see everything on the spectrum when it's playing. Go ahead and play it. ahead and just very from the very beginning I'm gonna go ahead and shave off the um, the lows because those are unnecessary um, frequencies there so I'll go over here to this shape of the curve and make it a low cut and then I'm gonna make that low cut even steeper by making 24 decibels or octaves all right I like that, and let's hear it again. As you, you can go ahead and listen as I make adjustments because that's kind of how we, you know, we mix as as uh, mixing engineers. You listen to it as you adjust whatever parameters on your uh, plugins and um, analog equipment as well. That's how it works. You just listen as you, as you change, as you make changes. And then you A, B it, and whatever sounds better, you keep. Whatever doesn't sound better, you replace or remove, so on and so forth. set up this loop so that it goes back to the beginning when I hear uh, the drums coming. I want to hear that because I want to hear what it sounds like when the drums come in as well. So I want to just keep a little bit of the drums in there actually. So here we go. So far it's sounding really good. Um, the reason why I went ahead and drop these frequencies a little tad bit over here around 500 hertz is because I felt like uh, like like the clarity of the synth was going to stand out a little bit more if I dropped the, the muddiness and that's where kind of the muddiness is sitting in the mix right now so that's kind of where I dropped that and I dropped all of these uh, frequencies down here just to clean it up and get it out of the way of the of the lows when uh when the bass drops. All right, so we'll go and uh, we'll go also lower some of the highs over here because we don't want it to sound too, too bright. But that's where the uh, hi-hats, the percussion, are going to stand out a little bit more as well. So let's hear that. Let's hear what it sounds like. these hi-hats over here in the uh, mixer track and I'm going to rotate this little blue thing over here um, this is basically the stereo width of the track I want to uh, widen it I'm gonna go ahead and just roll it down to the left if I rolled it down to the right it will turn purple and that means I'm making it more mono which is basically narrowing the track even more and it already is. Um, so here I'm wet. I'm widening so that the hi hats stand out on the sides. So here we go.
soon as the um I'm really liking how the synth is, is sounding in comparison to the hi-hats when the hi-hats come in. The hi-hats are really standing out because I got the synth a little bit out the way, but it's still holding its ground where where it's placed in the sound spectrum. So what we're going to do is control the the lows a little bit on the bass. When that comes in, it kind of stands out a little bit too much in comparison to the synth and the drums. Kind of masks everything, if you ask me. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just lower it in volume for now. And see, maybe we might not have to do anything else. <laughs> that's sounding but i am gonna scope the bass just a little bit so i'm gonna go ahead and throw an uh, eq on that too the eq of my choice is also going to be the pro q3 from fab filter that's uh like the best eq ever but in my opinion but anyways let's see what that sounds like a high cut on there real quick just to uh just to hear what it sounds like without the highs in the bass and um just hear what it sounds like in comparison to everything else I basically did there on the bass, which is from Gorilla Nation, by the way. Gorilla Nation has this plugin, um, a bass synth, and it's a synth for other things too, but the bass synth is what I usually use it for. Um, it has these, these bass sounds in it, and it's really bananas. It has these parameters too, so you can get really in depth on how you want it to sound. Uh, but just stock as is, everything also sounds awesome. Um, if you if you want to go into uh, the adjustments or different adjustments or uh, you know just any mixing with the low end, you know you could go ahead and use other tools for that. But you know just as is as a standalone uh, bass synth, I think it's pretty good. So. Uh, Let's continue. I'm pretty satisfied with what the intro sounds like and the way that it goes into the drop. We're gonna work on it a little bit more, but just I'm gonna go, I'm gonna continue uh, just working on the rest of the beat and making sure that that everything sounds good.
spread this uh, clap right here too. This clap sounds really nice, and um, I want to I want to make sure that it, it it widens the track a little bit so everything is not stuck down the middle, like the bass and the kick. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put this Gorilla Nation track, which is track number seven. I'm gonna hold Option and click left continuously until it turns into the number one because I like to have my bass track as the very first thing on my mixer track um, usually just be able to monitor the levels of that instrument you know what I'm saying more constantly since it's the very first one um, the next one I like to follow is with the kicks which is already the case here after the kicks I used to I like to go with the snare or the clap use the clap and then the snare is over here as well. So I'll go ahead and click on it. That's track number five, option, and left, left. So it'll be 808, kick, snare, clap, hi-hat, and then whatever other percussions that I involved in the mix, like the rim shot and then the... Um, the synth. The synth is part of the melody, so it goes after all of the drums. So it will go lows, then drums, and then synths, or whatever other melodic instruments you choose to put in the mix. That's how my order usually goes. You could go as far as even color coordinating it. I usually like my bass or my lows to go in a reddish color. So you go right click on the track. Go to change color and then choose uh, whatever color you want in the color spectrum for each track um then I, I usually highlight all of my percussion or you know, drums and highlight those and give them an orange color and then the, per the high percussion i'll go ahead and give those so isolate them a little bit, a higher tone of yellow. And then um, the melodics, like that, I usually put them around like pink or purple. Or, and then if I have vocals, I put them blue. Um, if I have effects, tracks, I'll put them in green, usually. And, um, you know, just, I like to be organized like that, so.